at the heart of all statistical analysis is data. We collect all different types of data, and so it's important we know kind of the different types of data and how we can classify that data. First, let's look at how data can be split into different levels, levels of data. The most basic level of data we call nominal data. Nominal data is categorical data. Examples of categorical data would be things like colors, names, maybe it's a yes-no questionnaire, maybe we're asking about gender, where the answer is some type of category. Nominal data we can't do much mathematically with because there's not numbers to work with. When we start working with numbers, that goes to higher levels of data. The next higher level of data is ordinal data. And it's data that is in order, or data that can be ranked from first to last. Now it's important in this ranking that the space between ranks The space between first and second and the space between second and third is not important. So an example of ordinal data might be you're in some type of 5K race, and we look at what place they finish. And it doesn't matter how far apart first and second are or how far apart second and third are. The space between them isn't important. What's important is their ranking, first, second, third, fourth. We might even say, hey, let's rank the top national parks or rank the top parks in a city. First, second, third, fourth. There's the space between them is not important. What's important is the ranking and the order. Now, when we start wanting that space to become important, that's what gives us interval data. Interval data is ordered data same as the ordinal data with the same space between units. Now, it's important to note, as we say that it has the same space between units, we are saying, though, that there is no 0, no absolute 0. 0 is kind of a relative position. And the classic example of this is temperature. Zero degrees Fahrenheit does not mean a lack of temperature. It's just a point on there. But the space between zero and one degrees is the same as the space between one and two degrees. That is interval data. Now, if we do want to have an absolute zero point where zero actually means nothing, we call that ratio data. Ratio data is data in intervals. with a 0 point, and that 0 point literally means nothing. So an example of ratio data might be your score on a test. A 0 on a test means you got nothing right, or maybe the number of miles between two points. Zero would mean there's actually no space between those two points. Those are different levels of data. As we have more complex data, it becomes a higher level of data. One way we can classify data is by these different levels of data. Another way we can classify data, though, is by looking at the different types of data.
data types fall into two broad categories, and one of those categories gets broken down into two subgroups. The first broad category is what we call qualitative data. Qualitative data is kind of like nominal data. The results are categorical data. The results of categorical data. In other words, we're putting things into categories again. The answers are not numbers. The answers are things like hair color, brown, brunette, maybe blood type, O positive, AB, maybe ethnic group, or street name. This is all qualitative data because it describes the qualities of the person providing data. That is different than what we call quantitative data. Quantitative data is numerical data. And quantitative numerical data, numbers, quantities, is broken up into two different types of quantities. The first type is discrete data, which is counted data. The results come in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Quantitative discrete data would be like the amount of money you own in your bank account, or the number of students in a class. because we count those things. You can count the cents and your money. You can count the number of students. You're not going to have a half of a student. You're not going to have a half of a penny. Discrete data is counted because we can literally list all the options out. This is different than continuous data, which is measured data. A good way to identify continuous quantitative data is it, the data results could be any decimal. Notice that's different than money, which can only have two decimal digits for the cents. With continuous data, you could have seven, eight, nine decimal digits, more decimal digits. You can have irrational numbers. These would be values such as weight or height or distance. Technically, time is continuous, even though a lot of the times it's treated as discrete, where we hit every single value in between 1 and 2 as we go from 1 to 2. Continuous data. Being able to identify these different classifications of data, whether it's the level of data or type of data, helps us identify the correct statistical analysis that can be applied.